Yep, we made it back. A couple more trimmers. These ones are almost twins. One's a uh, straight shaft, the other's a curved shaft. 25cc, these are the MT or Bolins by MTD. Uh, the straight shaft is model BL160, the curved shaft is BL110. I got these from a friend of mine, <clears throat> and uh, they used to belong to his dad. And uh, I don't know, Jerry was telling me, I can't remember uh, how long it's been since it's been started. He sees the videos, he'll be able to comment and let us know. So I have honestly no idea how long they've been, how long it's been since they've been ran. But uh, he was saying one of them, I believe he said one of them he thought ran, and the other one uh, possibly had some issues. Um, but uh, we'll see. Hopefully he'll see the videos and comment. And he was talking about getting a channel going himself. He lives in uh, one of the better parts of Ohio, out in the country. And uh, he's got some pretty cool projects coming up. So he was talking about starting a YouTube channel to uh, go over some of that on the stuff that uh, they're into. So I'm hoping he does. And uh, his daughter's got a pretty cool old Ford step side. It's pretty nice. They'll be doing some work on. He's got a really nice square body itself. A couple Jeeps. And uh, so, we'll get started. I'm not sure which one to start with first here. The, I think it's a straight shaft. This may be the one that runs. It has a little bit of fuel in it. I think it's this one. Yeah, so it's got a little bit of, little bit of fuel in it. And uh, lines are rock hard. And the straight shaft... Or I'm sorry, the curved shaft. See what it's got going on. I've had these probably at least a week. It's the first chance I've had to mess with them. And this one, I think, I believe was empty. Yeah, so there's no fuel on this one. And so we'll check it out. They are complete. Uh, this one, let's see, what we've got for lines. I could use a set of lines. You can see, I don't know if I can get you down in there enough. The lines got some shrinkage going on there. They're like really, really hard. And they, they move around inside the tank instead of being good and tight like they should. Yeah, this one you can actually, this is the, should be the, yeah, the return line. So I mean, it's where they shrunk, you can pull them straight out. So it'll definitely need a set of lines, for sure. Which, no big deal. We can do that. And the good thing is, parts are still out there for these. So if there's something you need, you can definitely get it. So we'll shoot a little, I want to do this, so we'll shoot a little juice in it. And, See if she takes off. Should. I can just step out of the way. Too much stuff. Get enough in her just to just to hear it kick. Get a little bit of go go juice. Yeah, I'm hoping Jerry does that channel. That'd be pretty cool. Alright. Let's see. That should be enough to see if it. Yep, she's a runner. Alright, so I guess the trick will be we'll get some fuel lines in it. And then uh, I take it outside, see what she'll do, see if the carb needs any work. I could. Yeah, the primer don't feel too bad. We'll pop the top off, make sure the screen's clean, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll get this ready and we'll throw a set of lines in it real quick. Alright, so what we're going to do is check the carb for some flow. This is where your uh, your screen catches a lot of the debris and sometimes it's obvious 
if they're plugged up sometimes it's not it's like this one doesn't look like anything's in it but what you can do as long as you have the bottom off for your diaphragm he's got the four screws you take them out and you can see this is where your needle and your seat and everything is you can take get you a little bit of fuel put it right in there on top of the screen it should start dripping out the bottom now this one's not dripping but it could be a really good seal so God, here we go. Here's my pick. we'll take and move it around see if we get a drip and we're not getting a drip so there's a good chance yeah nothing so we'll do is uh we'll take the screen out this one's pretty much bad so we ain't gonna worry about hurting it so hopefully this pick will get it <laughs> i think the pick's too flimsy Here's our old screen. There's fuel in it. That's oh, pretty much empty. So it's sitting on top. Let's try opening up the needle now. Nothing. Alright, so what we'll do is take the needle out make sure it's not plugged first we'll make sure the needle is moving Which actually looks like it might be frozen in place yeah I think it was yeah so it looks like they might have been setting for a little while Okay, let's try it now. Give me a little bit more go to the juice here. Give her another shot. It's like the needle might have just been frozen in place. Should have had something. Alright. So we're gonna do what we're gonna do with it. Right here. We'll take the, the needle out, and so all you have is this one screw, you got a pin going across. You have to watch because right underneath this arm is a spring. You don't want to lose it. So once you take that screw out, you can see how it wants to lift up because it's got a spring under it. And there's our needle. Yeah, it must have just been gummed up because I don't know. Well, I probably can't get a good enough shot for you guys to see through there. Well, you can kind of see the light through there. So it's definitely open. So how it's supposed to work is you drop the gas in. It'll go on the top, as long as it's open, you move the needle around. Sometimes you're going to have to move the needle around, but it'll drip out the bottom. And uh, 
It doesn't really look gummed up in here. No. It does look good. I think the, the needle just needs cleaned up. I think it was just sticking. So get all that cleaned up. <clears throat> we'll throw it back together. The diaphragm is pretty stiff, but it's not stiff enough to where it's crinkling yet. It's close, so hopefully that'll be enough to get it to work. We'll definitely give it a shot. I mean, the worst we have to do is get a kit for it. But uh, we'll throw this back together. I wouldn't expect this part to be quick because sometimes it can be a pain in the butt getting this to set in here right. Definitely got to have some patience and uh, you just trust me you don't want to lose that spring. Been there, done that. There's no real easy trick to it that I know of. Just take your time, be patient and try to keep everything to where if it pops out to where it's going to be technically easy to find. So I usually use like a bowl or something like this and do my best to keep it over it. So if it falls out, it falls down into it. Keeps me on keep me from losing it. But uh, so I'll throw this back together, get a new screen, and we'll throw the carb back together and get it back on the trimmer. All right, carb's back together. So we're going to try the uh, fuel lines here. So you can see this one has uh, the two that are side by side how well that camera's picking it up you got so in here here's your primer your main fuel lines to the inside of it and you got two holes that are side by side the one on the inside is your main fuel line the one on the outside is for your return so you just as usual we just cut them a little bit of an angle put a little bit of a bit two cycle oil grease whatever you have something for a lubricant just get it down in there. It helps it slide through a little bit better. And there we go. It started. So just grab it. And pull it through. Do both lines the same way. What we need is enough line you on the tank here it's probably more than enough so take that in cut it to where it's nice and flat and our new fuel filter get that on there that's a tight fit there we go Drop that sucker down in there. Now with this one, there is, get it in there and see where we're at. Okay, just a little bit taken out. Perfect, so for this one, back it up a little bit so you guys can see on your tank. You can kind of see it dips down right here. And right here, it's probably like when it's setting, setting like down on the ground, it'll rest on those, but that's your lowest points. So you just set it to where your fuel filter is in the lowest point. You don't want it up high, or you'll have gas in the bottom, but your filter is up too high. It won't pick it up, make it run like it's running out of fuel. So we're good there. So now, carb's still loose. It's not tight, obviously, it's missing, you know, I don't have the plastic piece on it, so it makes this a little bit easier. We'll get our line up to about where we need it, it's roughly right there. Slide right on. And give it a little bit of a choice here in a minute, but that's good enough. If you're concerned about it being, having that little bit of a twist in it, you can always take it back off, take a little out, you just don't want to take too much out. We'd be running a new line all over again. So you're better off having too much 
you know, then not enough. So in case you decide to shorten it up some, make it a little tighter, you're good to go. So your return line is the same way. Cut it at an angle. Some tanks can get away just a little bit of an angle. That's what I'm doing or not. I feel a little bit of lubricant on there. Some of them you have to have a. Have a yeah, I think it went. Oh, yeah, it's going. That one you don't really have to worry about cutting off flush unless you're putting a uh, barb on it. I know some people run them, some don't. You can put them little black barbs on there. And pull it up snug against the tank. I personally hardly ever use them. To each their own on that. But cool. So there's a new line. It's simple. And the I just want to replace the purge ball. Some people call it the primer ball, but uh, I don't have one. I thought I had one, but it's uh, the diameter of it up in here where it sits underneath the, the uh, cover right there, you know, holds it down, is too big on my new one. So, so that takes care of the fuel lines, simple. So it's just about ready to go. So what we're going to do now is, as long as the diaphragm holds up on it, we'll be good. So we're going to get the plastic back on. and. We should be about ready to fire this thing out. All right, so I'm gonna get the cover back on, and then we'll pick it back up. Here we go. See if she'll fire up. Pick the worst possible day for this. We got a lot of wind, and it is very, very cold. So we get her to prime up. I was, saying, I was going to change the primer, but the one I had wouldn't fit it. This one seems to be holding. The thing I'm worried about is the diaphragm in there where it's real dry and stiff. I don't know if it'll actually function like it should, but we're about to find out. There we go. She's trying to go. That's what I'm thinking because it is chilly. All right, give it another shot. Come on, man, it's cold out here. Just needs to adjust it a little bit. We'll give that a shot. <laughs> Man, it's cold. I should have worn a coat. Too far in. <clears throat> you know, some you get lucky, you can take them all the way in and back them out about two and a half turns, and you get lucky, and it'll it'll get it good enough. Good enough to where. So we'll try that. So there's. One. We'll try two turns. See what we get. So there's one on that one. Yeah, that was way out. So we got that half turn. 
One turn. Two turns. All right, let's try that. Getting there. Okay, just a little bit more. Getting there. Get frustrated yet. I got something to. Whew! Damn, it's cold out here. There we go. Just bumped the idle up just a hair. If that helps any. Keep them shaking. I think it needs that diaphragm replaced is what I'm thinking. That's cranked up pretty high on that diaphragm. Yeah. About positive. Yeah, I think that's all it is. I think it just needs a diaphragm. You could run it like that if you had to. I mean, it's actually running pretty good. Let's try it. Yeah, as long as you let it run, it's just coming around, so. That's a plus. It might work its way out of it. Um, I don't know how long it's been setting. Hopefully Jerry will comment and let us know that with this one and the other one. But 
it's definitely a runner. You could you, know, you could definitely run it like that. I think the more you run it, the the more it's going to come around. Or you can take the time. It's it's really simple to do. You just take the back of the car, by the bottom of the car, off, and just throw a new diaphragm in it, and it'd probably rock and roll for you. <clears throat> so we've done the fuel filter, both lines. I did change the screen and the carburetor and uh, the diaphragm. You see, it's pretty stiff. But uh, it's definitely a runner. So, uh, yeah, thanks for the donation, Jerry. We'll get on the other one uh, here shortly. Kind of got a lot going on at home right now. So uh, it's kind of tough to get out here and try to make some videos. But uh, so hopefully here in the next couple days, we'll hit the other Bowens. It's the straight shaft. And this one actually is cleaned up really nice. I don't know if you guys can tell in the camera or not. But uh, it's gave it a good wipe down. You can kind of see on the, oops, on the guard. If I can get it to where you can see it. Uh, I'm to try to keep knocking everything over. Where it was uh where it was just setting, you can kind of see up there in the corner. I left some on along the bottom so you guys can see the difference. So it's definitely coming around. It's gonna clean up and be a really nice trimmer for this summer. And uh, so here we go, it's a runner. So I was saying it's a Bowens MTD Bowens BL 110 curved shaft. This thing will run good. I was saying I think it just needs ran. Need to run it. Hopefully it'll come around. If not, throw a diaphragm in the bottom of the carb and this thing will be ready to boogie. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Get in here out of the cold, and uh, we'll catch you at the next one. Hopefully we'll be here shortly. But uh, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.